species is the basic unit of ecology. Set of several species makes population, different populations make a community and several communities interacting with each other make an ecosystem. Each biotic community lies in an abiotic environment called biotope. The biotopes provide material and energy to the communities inhabiting it. This means there is an interaction between the biotic communities and their environment. The term ecosystem was introduced by A. G. Tansley in 1935 as living world and its habitat, but the concept appeared in ecology much later. An ecosystem is the structural and functional unit of biosphere comprising of the living organisms and their non-living environment that interact to form a self-sufficient and stable system. The relationship between a biotic community and the non-living environment is always a mutual one. That means not only the environment affects the community, but the community also modifies the environment as shown here. Ecosystem has been assigned various names by different workers such as Biosynosis by Carl Mobius in 1877, Microcosm by S. A. Forbes 1887, Holocene by Frederick in 1930, Biosystem by Thinemann in 1939, Biogeosynosis by Sukhachev in 1944 and Ecocosm by R. Mishra in 1960. The importance of ecosystem lies in the flow of energy and the cycling of matter between the living and non-living components of the system. The study of ecosystem offers a holistic approach. That is, it gives a complete picture of the unit which is more important than the individual components of the system. Ecosystem approach involves the following important aspects. Flow of energy from living to non-living, cycling of matter between biotic and abiotic components, functional relationship between the organisms themselves and the environment. Energy flow and cycling of matter in an ecosystem. An ecosystem always remains in balanced condition unless it is disturbed by man. The science of control of the ecosystem is called cybernetics. Types of ecosystem. The natural ecosystem is of two types terrestrial and aquatic. The terrestrial ecosystem includes forests, grasslands and deserts. In this program, grassland ecosystem has been dealt with. Grasslands, also called rangelands, provide forage and habitat to the grazing animals and wildlife. In the rural areas, dried hay is collected from grasslands, especially the tall grasses, and are used as fuel, fodder and thatching material. Grasses are very good soil binders due to extensive fibrous roots and thereby significantly reduce the soil erosion. In India, 
The area under various kinds of grass cover is estimated to be 18 to 19 percent of the total land. The annual production of dry grass or hay is about 250 million tons. Growing grasses along with forest trees like teak and sal is called agroforestry in which the ground floor of soil is used for growing grasses. In grassland ecosystem, the rainfall is from 25 to 75 centimeters per year. In such a low amount of rainfall, the big trees can't survive. The grasses attain a height of 2 to 3 meters. Bamboo is the tallest grass growing up to 10 meters. Grasslands in temperate regions are pure grasslands without trees. They have been given different names such as prairies in North America, steppes in Eurasia, pampas in Argentina and tussock in New Zealand. Prairies have tall grasses. In hot weather, all grasses become dry and mix with the soil and therefore the soil of grasslands is rich in minerals. The upper portion of the grassland soil is dark due to accumulation of the organic matter. In the tropics, the grasslands are mixed with trees here and there. Such grasslands are called savanna. Savannas occur in South America, Australia and India. The climate is arid and the trees are thorny. According to Odom, each ecosystem has both biotic and abiotic components. Biotic components include producers, consumers and decomposers, whereas the abiotic components include organic compounds, inorganic nutrients and climatic factors. The living or biotic components of grassland ecosystem are producers. Green plants are always producers because they have the capacity to produce food like carbohydrates by combining simple substances like carbon dioxide and water in the presence of the sunlight, the process being called photosynthesis. The common producers grasses of Indian grasslands are Diacentium, Sehima, Phragmitus, Saccharum, Cynodon, Symbopogon, etc. The common shrubs and trees of savanna grasslands as observed in India are Prosopis, Zizifus, Caparis, Acacia, and Butia. Consumers Consumers are of different orders such as primary, secondary, tertiary and the topmost. Primary consumers are the herbivores like rabbit, goat, sheep, deer, horse, cow, buffalo and nilgai etc. Primary consumers are called the secondary producers because all carnivores depend on them for their food. Charles Elton has called the primary consumers as the key industry animals. Several insects like grasshoppers, leaf hoppers are also common. Spiders are also found in plenty. Burrowing herbivores like rats are also found in plenty. Secondary consumers are carnivores like snakes, fox, jackals, and wild dogs. While tertiary consumers are wolf, panther, and birds like kite, 
Vulture and Peacock. Decomposers These include bacteria and fungi which act upon the dead bodies of producers and consumers and return minerals locked in them to the soil. Grasslands form a variety of ecosystem which are located in different climatic conditions ranging from near desert conditions to patches of shola grassland that can be found on the hill slopes near the very moist evergreen forests in South India. The Himalayan forests show grasses mixed with conifers. There are tracts of tall elephant grass in the low-lying terai belt of Himalayan foothills. The animals migrate up to the high altitude grasslands in summers and move downwards in the forests when the snow covers the grasslands. This ecosystem supports several endangered species of animals such as tigers, elephants, rhino, etc. Other common animals are wild ass, hangal, Kashmir stag, langur, and pygmy hawk. The semi-arid land of eastern India, central India and the Deccan are covered with patches of grasses with thorn forests. The common animals here are wolf, the black buck and chinkara. The Shona grasslands are common in western Ghats, Nilgiri and Palni hills. Brisa minor, a grass with beautiful flowers adds to the beauty of these hills. Grasslands of Madhya Pradesh S. D. N. Tiwari and R. Mishra have studied the grasslands of Madhya Pradesh and recognized eight types of grasslands. Some grasses of economic value are Alloteropsis which is found in the wasteland and sandy soil and has an economic importance of being a fodder. Andropogon, which is found in the hilly areas, is also used as fodder. Apluda, this type of grass is found on the slopes and punts and it serves as a soil binder as well as fodder. Arundiniella, this particular type of grass is found in marshes and is used for thatching roof. Semcrus. This is a grass commonly found in plains and offers an excellent type of fodder. Chrysopogon. This grass is found in forests and again is a good fodder. Simbopogon martin. This particular grass is found in the plains of Betul, Chindwara and Mandla and it is a source of commercial Russian grass oil used in soap making. Functions of Grassland Ecosystem Grasslands are the grazing areas for many rural communities. Farmers who keep cattle and goats as well as shepherds who keep sheep are highly dependent on grasslands. Domestic animals are also grazed on the common land of the village. Dry grasses are collected as fodder and stored to feed the cattle in summers when there is no grass left for them in the grasslands. Grass is also used to thatch houses and farm sheds. Thorny bushes and trees in savanna grasslands of India are used as fuel wood. Most of the grasses in tropical countries like India are C4 plants. They can use even the minimum amount of carbon dioxide that is present in the air. They start photosynthesis even when the carbon dioxide content is as low as 1 to 10 ppm whereas C3 plants like soya bean require 50 to 150 ppm. The production of C4 plants is more and most of the grasses occupy this category. Cynodon popularly known as Bermuda grass or Doob grass is a plant which is observed commonly throughout the world. 
and in India, they have got some religious value also as they are offered in worship to some of the deities and gods in the Hindu religion. In many areas, grasslands have been used for centuries by pastoral communities. Due to population explosion and industrialization, grasslands have been converted to residential areas and industries. Farmers have started cultivating cash crops like sugarcane and soya bean. It needs more irrigation and has made the soil saline. Short-term economic gains should not go at the cost of long-term economic losses and ecological losses. The number of grazing animals has increased and present-day grasslands cannot support it. Therefore, grasslands are undergoing deterioration. Fires, natural as well as man-made, result into the degradation of grasslands ecosystem. In India, the area under grasslands has squeezed to only 3.7% at present. Several grassland species have disappeared from several parts of India in which they were found 50 to 60 years ago in abundance. It is interesting to note that because of the disappearance of these grasslands, how the animal species have been affected. For example, the wolf is now highly threatened. The wolf depends on hunting of the black buck and chinkara, which have reduced because of poaching for their meat. On the other hand, birds such as the great Indian bustard are vanishing due to the degradation of grasslands ecosystem. And in this way, the disappearance of grasslands has affected the disappearance of animal species also. Due to disappearance of grasses, wild grasses will also disappear. Our present day wheat, Triticum estivum, originated as a result of a cross between two wild grasses, Triticum monococcum and Aegilops squarosa. Therefore, it is evident that grasses are important for the development of new varieties of crop plants. There are various ways in which this can be done. For example, grazing should be allowed by rotation. Fires have to be controlled. Different grasslands must be declared as national parks and sanctuaries where not only grasses shall be protected, but animals like wolf, chinkara and birds like bustard and floricus will also be conserved. Grasslands should not be converted to industrial areas. Awareness should be created in the common man about the long-term advantages of the grassland ecosystem. And keeping grasslands alive should always be a national priority.